world and welcome back to Stuff We Do, where we do all the knife stuff you love. Knife reviews, knife tests, knife modifications and outdoor stuff with knives. Okay, today we are talking about this fantastic thing, the Vosteed Gator. Okay, and I have other things I want to talk about, but we'll talk about that now. Okay, first thing, when we get the package, we get this beautiful um, push-out sleeve inside. We have this wonderful tin. Okay, we get a few stickers and we even get this marvelous patch. Okay, that's fantastic. And then we get all the specs. Look at the little gator chasing a little corgi. Support Vosteed and you get a little microfiber cloth and on here we have all the specs. Sandvik 128N, we have 3.98 inches, but when you measure it, it looks exactly like four. We get a modified sheep's foot. We get a flat ground blade, we get a stone wash, we get my carta, and it's a liner lock. Okay, I am going to spoil this immediately for all of you and just tell you that I do actually love this knife. Okay, we need more bigger knives in the world. Okay, we'll be talking about other knives that we can compare. And we get this nice pouch and I dig the orange. It's a nice pouch with the extra little thingy on here, a little ranger patch. I think we call these one inch blocks with the Vosti logo on it. So very, very nice. So we get a lot of extras. Um, this knife I got from Swartboard EDC and Gear, um, but you can buy them now at uh, the Knife Guy. Okay, he still has a few on his site, so you can go look there now. First look around. I love this frag pattern on this thing. It's wonderful. It's grippy, but it's not horrible. It's nice. Then we have a reversible pocket clip, but I took the extra time to put that little plate in here. And I love that. We have a nice lanyard hole, nice pivots on this guy. You see there's little scallop thingy keys out of it. It's got a nice pivot collar, front flipper, normal flipper and thumb hole. Okay. Then on the other side, we have a wonderful clip, nice and broad clip. And yes, there's no landing pad under the clip, but it's still, I can get it in and out of rugby shorts and jeans and whatnot with no problem. And then we have a little Vosteed logo on there also. Do you see that? Wonderful. Okay. Um, this thing is a fidget knife for something this big. You can fidget with this thing all day long. Okay. So we have the normal flipper works fantastic works fantastic and we have the front flipper which also works wonderfully the blade shape on this guy is fantastic okay nice flat ground blade almost a full flat here at the top it is we have a little bit of a swedge going on over here and this thing is great your hands out of the way so you can actually get it onto a cutting board while holding it which is fantastic um, so you don't have to lean off the side to make contact um, for all kinds of tasks, this thing works fantastically. And we have this little pad over here so you can choke up very nicely on this knife. Okay. And you can have big hands, like super big gorilla paws, and you will still be able to hold this knife very nicely. Okay. Either a hammer grip or a saber grip. We do have jumping over here and it works very nicely. So that works very well. Okay, you can also pinch it, I suppose, if you really want to, but I don't know why. And um, it does have a tip and the tip's down far enough. So you can do utility cuts with this knife if you choose to. So let's compare this to a few things. Okay, put that there. Now, first thing I grabbed out of the cupboard while I was talking about this thing or thinking about it was this monstrous thing. This is the artisan cutlery proponent. Okay. Now, yes, everybody loves their overbuilt knives. So look at that. This thing is still thin enough so it can be quite slicey. Now, I love this thing. This is a Dirk Pinkerton design. And if you haven't seen this thing before, go check out my video on it and what this thing is for. But marvelous knife just to... I don't know, carry. Okay, it is a chunk to put in your pocket. I even made these in brass at one stage, but that you need a bucky to drive around. Um, so this thing is wonderful, and this is as big as I'm ever going to go to carry something with me, because you look quite intimidating when you take this out to take a thread of a child's jacket. Okay, so yes, 
the proponent. Actually, let's put it over here and just do the comparison. Okay, so the Vosteed is a bit longer in all dimensions, but this thing is definitely way chunkier. Okay, then the next one I took out was this guy. This is the Kaiser, um, what's that, Sheepdog. Yes, the Kaiser Sheepdog, the XL. This is a huge thing. Also, like I said, one of the bigger ones if you want to carry it with you. Um, at least it has reasonable stock on this one. So it is slicey. Look at the sizes. They are actually pretty much evenly matched in all dimensions. Okay, so that one is a bit... Okay, the perspective is going to make everything I push up look smaller. Okay. Okay, uh, you can kind of still see them. Okay, so that was a wonderful knife. Now you can get them with the thumb hole. Um, I do not have the extra large with the thumb hole. I only have the normal one, so I didn't even bother taking it out. Then I wanted to show you this guy. This is the Mini Paragon by Kaiser. And there's nothing mini about this knife. This thing is huge. Okay, so it's a bit shorter in all things, but look at that tall blade. Okay, but I see you can get them now again. They've been re-released with black micarta and black blades, and I see the knife guys carrying that now. Ow. Okay. So this thing also wonderful. I just like the awesome look that it has. Okay, so let's put the mini Paragon there. Nothing mini about that one. Go check out the review on it. And then, this used to be my favorite, favorite carry knife. It's a long blade. It's a big handle. It's a button lock. And you know I love them button locks. Um, also, you can choke up on this thing. Nice thin blade stock. Now, why did I take this out? Because I want to show you this. It's a bit a hair shorter on both sides than the Vosteed. The blade's quite a lot thinner or smaller. Um, but these two knives actually pretty much do the same thing for me. Okay. See that? That's the Kaiser Big Lighter XL. Yes. Also, these ones you can get now with this color combo or that kind of um, scales and a satin blade. Okay. Wonderful knives. If you don't have one of these, get them. Okay. Now, I like the bigger knives. And we do not get enough bigger knives in our lives. So, this thing has been living in my pocket. And I'm going to use it today as we do a little bit of a braai. Now, all of these knives I've just shown you will not be something you are interested in if you like things like this. Um, this is the Hoag in Magna Cut. Uh, check out the video on that thing. But this is the ultra light um, three to three and a half inch blade length type of people. The people that carry knives because they're functional and you don't want to know that they are in your pocket. Okay. Um, yes. So if you carry a knife like that, I must say when I'm wearing, well, I never wear thinner shorts than rugby shorts but if i'm wearing my rugby sh actually with rugby shorts this thing is still fine but if you're for example wearing thin material pants or something and you want to carry a knife but you don't want to feel it or you don't want it to wrinkle your pocket whatnot then yes something like this will be awesome but they are very small compared to these big boys okay I'm not saying carry a big knife. If you feel insecure about things, that's good. The only reason I like the longer blades is because most of my knives, this one not really, um, this one definitely not, but most of my knives I, um, knives I use to do food prep when I'm outside. I know it's like walk 10 meters back into the house, but I just like doing that because I do not hunt on a daily basis and I do not yeah cut things for a living so I use it for food prep and the longer blade works way better than short little blades okay and it's cool this thing is just cool look at this thing it's cool it's fun it's awesome it's just all kinds of awesome and cool okay so I really 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 like this knife okay um, enough about knives. Never say that. But okay, enough. 
Um, I went to the shop this morning because me and the kids, we are at home. Um, today we are going to Bry. So I got long, what do you call these things? Matches again. I love these long matches. Whenever I see a place that sells long matches, I go and I get myself more long matches because long matches make me happy. I also did a video on these things a while back. I think it was the same day when I actually hid my fancy Kaisers and my uh, you know the old titanium ones and my ADV. I still couldn't find those knives. Okay, I'm rambling. It's nice and cool today. It is about 13 degrees Celsius. Actually, let's talk about that. You have nothing better to do. You want to sit here the whole day and watch me talk. Um, Fahrenheit. German guy. They're supposed to be efficient. He, uh, if I can remember correctly took the lowest point that they could de get at that time, which was like a slurry of, I think, ammonia and ice or salt or water and salt and ice or something. And he took that as his zero, okay, which is below freezing. And then he took his other reference point as like, I think, the human body or something. Yes. And then around that, he started working out his whole Fahrenheit scale. I could never get behind that. It is super confusing. And yes. Um, yeah, so I, Fahrenheit, I don't understand. Celsius, Swedish guy, the guys that brought us this, Sandvik Steel. This thing is made in China. Um, Sandvik Steel, which is fantastic steels. And Celsius is a fantastic measuring system. When a thing freezes, it's zero. When a thing boils, it's 100. And then you divide it into equal parts. How easy is that? Okay. Um, what are we doing? We're brying. So let's bry. Okay, this looks ridiculous, but I was breaking down pallets. I'm using trash to start the fire. Okay, if you've ever broken up pallets, you get these fibrous things in the middle between the piece of wood. Now I'm just burning things. So we'll bry later. But this is fun. And as you can see by the leaves all around me, we're on our way to solid winter now. Okay, excuse the leaf blower. My guy's blowing leaves. Um, Look at this. I've got my tri kids on my... Well, after the other things have died down. Just to get them to start burning. Tri kids. They're triangles. Okay, so my coals are getting ready. They're still too warm, but getting ready. So I can put on my... What's the first thing you put on a fire when it's extremely hot? Your grill. Okay, we have four crashers for today. We have very thinly sliced pieces of pork chop. Two of those. So let's do that. Okay, I just... What do you call it? The, the thing where you rub the grill with a wire brush. Weed blower is still glow. Weed blower? Leaf blower is still going. So sorry for that in the background. I'm going to chuck on some pork now. Apparently we're just doing pork today. It's me and the kids alone. I'm mommy and daddy again. But hopefully by tonight that will change for a while. Okay, and of course, to release all of these champions from their packages, we are going to be... I cannot see, I'm behind the camera. To release them from their packages, I'm going to be using my Vosteed. I think I just got, like, everything. Yes, I did. But anyway, so, yes, let's get them on the fire. Okay, I didn't show this, sorry, but why do you need a braai knife? Because this job started curling up, we just need to relax it. So we just cut over there through the fat parts so it would lie flat again. Okay, so first then it's been spiced. Mmm, delicious. The fire is way too hot still, but we're going to fight through it. Before I put spice on this side, bright tip, um, Bright tips for a novice, number 63 and 64. Okay, always get the bone side done first before 
you turn towards the fat side. That will lessen the flames, especially if your fire is extremely hot. Okay, and then tip number 65. When you spice it, spice... Actually, tip 65. Actually, I'm lying. I've never done tips to novice briars before. But when you are brying, it means you are in charge and you can decide. And if they don't like the way you make your things, then they can bry it themselves. That's the only tip for people brying. If you have the tongs in your hand, you are in control of everything. So while I am brying, my daughter is brying these multicolored marshmallows. And my son, he's got a different technique going today. Okay, and then he ate it. Um, <laughs> so he's not really brying it, but still it's fantastic. This is marshmallow number 460, but my pork chops, they are crispy. They have crispy little edges, and they are done. Okay, so the pork chops are going to come off now, and then we're going to wait a while and then start the rashers because we're doing only pork today okay the guy is still weed blowing or something and i have my pork rashers from here the kids trampolining like little crazy things what a wonderful wednesday it's holiday okay so i'm gonna finish frying this stuff okay, and these things are pretty much done the middle ones well that one maybe not but the rest are done so all of you stay safe happy have a good one and have a greater day that was supposed to be greater day okay goodbye